So now we want to talk about the electric field. So what exactly is the electric field? So you, you can think of uh, an object that has some charge on it, let's say a proton. You can think of the electric field as its influence in the space around it. All right. So what charge does, it's kind of like gravity. You can't necessarily see it, but it influences the things around it. And we visualize this interaction with charges and the uh, charges around other charges by this idea of the electric field. And what we, how we visualize it is that for positive charges, we see these field lines emanating away from the charge, right? So they move away from the charge like this, and they move out. Uh, symmetrically in all directions and the, the, all of the arrows are supposed to have the same size and same strength and when another charge let's put another smaller charge here let's let's instead of say this is an individual proton let's say that this is a, a collection of protons maybe a very large atomic nucleus right so this guy is very positively charged and he has all sorts of electric field lines coming off of him and these field lines are permeating space, right? And theoretically, these things extend out in all directions, everywhere. Uh, and the the farther away you are from the collect the central collection of charge, then the weaker the field lines are. But the the way that we can think of um, the interaction with the field lines and another charge to get the force is like this. So we have our charge here with all these field lines and we bring a second smaller charge what we will call the test charge into the region where all these field lines are so now we'll put our test charge right here all right and the the way to describe the interaction here is that of course, if I hold both charges fixed and then release the test charge, I, I'm going to hold the atomic nucleus fixed, and I release the test charge, and it will be repelled, and it will shoot off this way. So it will experience a force. And the way we can describe that force, it's a bit of a simpler notation than Coulomb's Law, is that the uh, magnitude of the electric field due to the charge, the uh, uh, atomic nucleus there, times the charge on the test charge. So this has charge little q, all right? And we really don't know what the large charge has. It, we, can, we can just give it a capital Q. It'll have charge capital Q, all right? So the force that uh, our test charge feels, this is the force on the test charge, is due to the electric field that the big charge produces and uh, that's multiplied by the uh, charge, the small charge on the test charge, right? The, the, and typically a test charge is going to be something like an individual proton or an individual, uh, well typically a test charge is positive so it's going to be an individual proton, right? Um, so this is just another way to think about how electric uh, charges interact, charged objects interact, right? So here are some rules for looking at the electric field. All right. So the rules for the electric field, number one, is that positive charges have their field lines point away. And number two, negative charges have their lines pointing toward them.
So they look like this. So a, a positive charge, again, as we've already seen, will have its field lines doing something like this. And a negative charge, an electron, will have its field lines looking something like this. All right, and so um, this is the first rule of of uh, field lines. All right, and the second rule of field lines. Well, I guess we, this is the first rule, and this was the second rule. The third rule of field lines. All right, is that lines can never cross. And they can uh, meet, but they can never crisscross. All right. Uh, maybe I should say crisscross. All right. They can never crisscross. Um, and so what that means is, for an individual proton, right, all of its lines will extend out like this. But these individual lines will never cross, right? So this guy will never cross with this guy, right? And this guy will never cross with this guy, right? They will extend out in one direction, and the, the field lines will, um, especially from a point charge, will typically be straight, right? And they will be uniform in all directions. Um, but what what this this rule number three here means is it, it particularly comes into play when we are looking at uh, a collection of charges. So let's just look at two, uh, a couple of situations here where we have two charges, right? And let's say I have a positive charge and another positive charge here, right? So if, if we look at our first charge here and it were uh, by itself, its field lines would look like this, right? But we got to uh, erase this here because this isn't quite what happens when it actually comes into contact with another charge. So let's draw some of these field lines here. And notice that these two field lines here are um, headed right toward each other, but they can never crisscross, right? So what will happen is that they will start to bend away from each other. So instead of that configuration like they had right there, what they will actually do is bend away from each other. So these field lines will do something like this. and they will never cross each other, okay? Um, but the ones that are pointing directly away from uh, themselves are, are, they will stay straight. But these lines uh, right here in the middle, right, these will never, ever crisscross, okay? They will never meet each other. Uh, so what about the uh, situation where we have... Uh, uh, two negative charges. Let's look at uh, whoop, let's look at two negative charges. If I have two negative charges, then these lines, of course, are going to be directed inward. But again, once these two charges are brought close enough to each other, these particularly these two field lines and the other field lines in that region will uh, feel a strong repulsion toward each other and so they will again do something like this. All right, and they will never ever cross. All right, uh, but what about the case where I have a positive and a negative charge? All right. So these guys will, in fact, cross. They won't crisscross, but their field lines will meet and join. 
All right. So here we have this line emanating away from the positive charge, terminating on the negative charge, and then they'll uh, keep doing this kind of thing. And really, in fact, only the charges that are, or the uh, field lines rather, that are directly opposite the other charge will be directed away. Everything else will be kind of in this fashion here, right? And uh, they'll look something like this. So this is how the field lines look for a uh, set of two charges. Okay, so now that we've seen how to uh, draw the electric field lines, what are the units of the electric field? So what are the units? Well, let's look back here. F equals E... Q, right? And F, remember, is in Newtons, and Q is in Coulombs. So if I wanted to rearrange this for E, I would just divide both sides by Q, and I get F divided by Q. And this is in Newtons, and Q is in Coulombs. So the units of E are going to be Newtons per Coulomb. All right, so this is the units of E. All right, uh, now let's do a quick example on uh, using the electric field. And let's imagine that I have a uh, positive test charge here, and it has a charge Q of 4 times 10 to the negative 6th uh, coulombs. All right. And I'm placing it in a region of space. I'm not going to worry about where my uh, where this electric field is coming from. It could be coming from another source charge. It could be coming from a collection of charges. It could be coming from a plate that has charge on it. I don't really care. All I know is that when I place this test charge in uh, this particular region of space, right? this region of space, it feels a force downward of 12 newtons. All right? So if this uh, charge feels a force downward of 12 newtons, what is the value of the electric field in this region? All right? Well, first of all, we can uh, kind of guess a few simple things here. First of all, what direction is the electric field pointing? Well, for the charge, our test charge, to be repelled downward, that must mean that the electric field lines are also moving downward. So my field, my field lines, wherever these are emanating from, are going to be downward. All right? And because my lines can never cross, the field lines, you can think of the field lines here pushing the positive charge down. So there's some positively charged uh, object up here this th there's one of two situations this could happen there could be a positively charged object up here or there could be a negatively charged object down here okay so you can think of like maybe a, a plate with a lot of negative charge on it and the field lines are all pointing down toward it or up here, there's a positive uh, plate with the field lines pointing down. Either way, the charge is uh, being forced downward, and it's going to accelerate downward due to the force that it feels. So what is the value of the electric field at this point? All right. Well, to solve the problem, we we'll start with the definition. F equals EQ. Uh, and now we need to simply solve this for E. So again, if I divide both sides by Q, my Q's cancel out, and I get E equals F over Q. And so now, all I have to do is plug in my values, and F we saw was 12 newtons, and Q was 4 times 10 to the negative 6. Uh, newtons per coulomb, 
or I'm sorry, uh, uh, just coulombs. Our final units are going to be newtons per coulomb. And when I take four or uh, 12 and divide it by 4 times 10 to the negative 6, I get a grand result of 3 times 10 to the 6th. And let me double check that power very quickly. Yes, so 3 times 10 to the 6th. And this is newtons per coulomb. All right. So in our next video, I'll talk about potential difference and voltage. We'll see you then.